This is part one of two parts that we'll be using to cover short run costs. And we want to look at the reason we have costs. And costs are a result of scarcity. Because we have scarce resources with unlimited wants, we always have to give up something. We want to do something else. And that cost is what we've given up. So if I want to spend my time mowing the lawn for an hour, that means I can't do something else for an hour. And the cost of mowing my lawn is that next best alternative I would have used. And we want to keep in mind, that's really what drives cost. Cost, if everything were unlimited in resources, there'd be no cost to doing anything. Uh, but given that resources are limited, we do have costs. And so we always have to determine how to allocate these re resources, whether it's time, water, land, uh, beach property, gold, whatever it is. The next best alternative is the cost of using a resource. And we must determine how to allocate these, getting the most value per dollar spent. So knowing that every action occurs a cost, and that cost is the opportunity cost of how a given resource is used, we're going to look at costs when they deal with the business aspect. So costs are really foregone opportunities, what we give up for something. If I'm going to start a restaurant, the building I need for that restaurant can't be used for something else. And that next best alternative is the cost to society of using that building for my restaurant, or if I'm going to use tables and chairs and meat, uh, whatever it is, I'm going to use a, I'm going to make a barbecue restaurant, therefore the pork and the beef that I use can't be used elsewhere, and if they're more valued elsewhere, then I would have to pay a cost greater than what my customers are willing to pay, and we'll look at this with profits, but we want to understand what drives costs, and that's the alternative uses for resources, the opportunity costs. Sometimes those costs are explicit. These are things that we see, they're obvious, they're monetized. Others are implicit, they are non-monetized opportunity costs. These would be things like the time uh, of an owner of a restaurant or a business, the time they spend that they are not being paid, that would be the opportunity cost. It would be the uh, capital, that the, the foregone interest on capital that's being used, or the alternative uses of capital that's being used, whatever that return would be, that would be an implicit cost. And so we can think about this, what are the costs of opening or running a restaurant, um, which is an important thing, should, should a doctor work on the line? So we look at a restaurant, we have labor, we have energy, we have pots and pans, we have food, we have tables, we have alcohol, we have the building. These are all costs that can be utilized or resources that can be utilized elsewhere. And therefore, these are the opportunity costs of what we give up to have this restaurant. And those would be mostly monetized. Now, the non-monetized implicit costs would be the owner's time, the uh, return on capital that's being used, that could be used elsewhere, that's being used to run this business. Those would be the implicit costs. And again, think of the cost of a doctor. Should a doctor work on the line here prepping food uh, when the doctor could be, say, it's a world-class heart surgeon, the opportunity cost of that doctor would be too great. We wouldn't want them working in the restaurant. Therefore, we want them working in the medical profession. So let's use this question. Suppose Nick quits his job in order to start a restaurant. He has been earning $60,000 a year in his job. Um, and so in, you know, in order to capitalize his restaurant, he also took out $100,000 in savings, which he was earning 6% annual percentage rate. So Nick's revenues for the first year of owning the restaurant were $200,000. And he spent $150,000 on food, drink, labor, capital, these expenditures. So we want to ask is the first question, what is Nick's accounting profit? And then once you've calculated that, what is Nick's economic profit? So go ahead and pause the video and try to calculate Nick's accounting profit and then his economic profit. Okay, Nick's accounting profit is really going to be the total revenue minus its explicit costs. And in this case here, his total revenue was $200,000. His explicit costs were $150,000. Therefore, his accounting profit is $50,000. It's a very simple formula we would use. His economic profit, however, we want to look at the $60,000 that Nick gave up in another field in order to run the restaurant, plus the $6,000 in interest income he lost because he's running the restaurant. He used his capital to run that restaurant. And therefore, the economic profit is minus $16,000. Nick is actually incurring a cost of owning the restaurant because he's giving up $6,000 in interest income, and he gave up a $60,000 a year job. Now, again, we're assuming Nick is indifferent between running the restaurant and his other job. So if we, he had a more, greater preference for running the restaurant, there'd be a different scenario here, but we're assuming they're the same. 
Now, why is this important? <clears throat> well, think about Mervyn's and why Mervyn's went out of business. Mervyn's was a retailer on the West Coast, sold mostly clothes. Um, they, went, uh, they were bought in, by Dayton Hudson in the mid-80s. Dayton Hudson, the owner of Target, kept it for about 20 years, and then it sold in the mid-2000, 2005, I believe, to a consortium of uh, private equity companies. And they immediately looked at the books and realized Mervyn's, which had owned a lot of its own buildings and own stores, was not charging market rent for those stores. It was not considering the market rent when it looked at its, account, its accounting profit. It took its accounting profit as just the total cost minus total revenue and the building was paid for. So it wasn't calculating the opportunity cost of the market rent. Once they split the company up into a retail division and a property division, the property division charged market rent to the retail division, the retail division was bankrupt. This is true for Macy's today. Macy's is uh, not calculating a lot of the opportunity costs of the building, the real estate it owns. And therefore, if it did, its economic profit would be far less than what's reported with its accounting profit. This will be the first part in costs. We'll take a look at the second part.